Welcome back. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the online course so far. You've learned a little bit about the history of mosaic art, and you've done a little bit of um, reflective self-study on yourself and come up with ways to represent aspects of yourself in visual form. So far, the mosaic you created was just made out of foam and cardboard, which is certainly not a permanent media. The reason that we're able to enjoy mosaic from thousands of years ago is because the artists used permanent media like stone and glass, and those elements were held together with a concrete substance called grout. Uh, so that's what we're going to move on to today. I've asked you to gather some things around your house or outside, wherever, uh, that represent aspects of you. And here's an example of some things that I found around my house that I might incorporate into my mosaic self-study assemblage. Uh, for instance, here's some traditional tessery. I've got rocks, good old-fashioned rocks, some glass bits that you just get at the craft store. They don't have sharp edges, so they're ideal. Uh, some little glass droplets. Uh, people use these in flower arrangements. I thought they were pretty. Um, some things I enjoy. I enjoy the beach and the sunshine. Why not incorporate some sunglasses? I'm an artist, so any kind of art supplies I'll want to glue on here just for fun. I'm very handy and I love to build things. I've got this little screwdriver. Why not? Another thing that's important to me is my children. They used to play with these when they were little. Little fireman and army man. I have hundreds of Hot Wheels that I just couldn't bear to throw it away. So maybe I can use those. Don't know why I save pop tops, drink way too much soda, but who knows? Maybe I can incorporate these into a pattern or a design on my piece. Uh, my faith is important to me. I've got a cross. I'll incorporate that. Um, one Halloween I made these crazy little skulls out of Sculpey. I don't know why, but they were cool and I might use those. Uh, if you need to break any tile or glass, it's important that you wear safety goggles. You might want to use a tool like this called a tile nipper. This just just, just uh, breaks the tile easily. If you don't have one of these, no big deal. A good way to do it is to put your tile on a smooth surface, lay a towel over it, hit it lightly with a hammer, but please include the towel to keep pieces from flying and wear your safety goggles. So, I've also got some Mardi Gras beads, some shells. I don't know if I'm gonna use all this stuff. This is just what I gather. Uh, as far as the surface where you'll build your mosaic assemblage, I specified about a 10 by 10 piece of uh, MDF board or plywood. Uh, I found this at Michael's, it's a little bit smaller. For some reason, I like a square format. You can use circular, rectangular, it's up to you. I just like this one because it had kind of an edge on it. I like to do the edges too, so I'm not sure how I'll treat that, but now I have the option. One last step before we get started is I want you to seal up this wood with a product called Mod Podge. You could use latex paint. You could use any kind of sealer, but this wood is porous. And when we use the grout, which is the cement-like stuff that we put in between the tiles, there's moisture in it and the uh, wood would absorb, absorb the moisture too fast and the grout would crack. So just a little side note, I think it's worth taking a minute though and sealing this up before you get started. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play with all of my pieces, all of my tessery, and see how I want to organize these. I'm going to come back and show you how I've done it, but I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll line up my Maybe I'll line up my pencils here, and maybe I'll put a car here and a car up here. Not this crazy plastic deer head. Maybe I'll we'll incorporate that somewhere over here. I don't know. I'm going to play with this, and I want to talk to you about glue, though. Please use a non-toxic, water-based glue like tacky glue. This is a good one. It grabs really fast, and it's thick. Thick glue is important when you have pieces to glue that aren't two-dimensional. Weld bond is another good choice. This is harder to find though, so you may want to stick with tacky glue. Okay, well I'm going to go, I'm going to play with this. I'm not going to glue anything down yet. I want to see how I want my composition to be arranged 
what of this I want to use, what I don't want to use if I think of something else when I'm halfway through putting this together that I have uh, handy, I'll grab that too. So I'm going to take a break, work on this, and when we come back, you'll see where I've decided to put my tessery. Then we'll glue it down and go from there. Okay, see you shortly. Welcome back. Well, as you can see, I've added a lot of my bits and pieces that I found. I added some more, in fact, and I did go ahead and glue some of these down. The whole thing just became really unwieldy and I needed to glue as I went in some cases. I still have a few things to glue on, as you'll see. I'm not sure how I want to treat the sides yet, but I will figure that out. I just thought I'd show you my progress. Once I've glued everything down, I want to let it dry overnight. And at that point, we'll be ready to grout. See you soon. Okay, welcome back. My piece is finished and the glue is dry. So I'm getting ready to mix up some grout. The grout is the cement-like substance that fills in between all of these areas and literally cements all of these pieces together. All right, I'm using a sanded grout. It's important that you use a sanded grout. Non-sanded grout is for joints that are smaller than these and the piece we're working on. So a sanded grout would be your best choice. I've chosen a charcoal gray just because that's what I had in my basement. You can use any color you like, but a neutral I think would work the best. I've gone ahead and scooped out about two cups of grout mix into a bowl. When you do that, you need to wear a dust mask because these little dust particles get all up in the air, and all up in your face. Might not be a bad idea to do it outside. So this is what I did. I just put two cups of this into this bowl. Now there's really no formula for how much water to add. I just like to do a little bit at a time until it's the consistency that I want. Stir it very slowly because, like I said, this powder will get all up in the air if you are too rough with it. Gentle stir. I'm going to need more water, but it's easy to add too much. So go very, very slowly, but obviously I need some more. The consistency I'm looking for is like a peanut butter. I probably just added a little more than I should have, but it's probably going to be fine. You can always go back in and add more grout. Yeah, that might that might work out okay. It's just like cement. Let's work this out a little bit. If your grout is too thin, it's really easy to work with, but if there's too much water in your grout, when it dries, it'll crack because there was so much moisture in there to begin with. So this is looking pretty good. Kind of like sandy peanut butter. Let's see. Once this is mixed up thoroughly with no little pieces of powder left, let it sit for five to 10 minutes to set up slightly before you put it onto your piece. You know what, I'm going to add just a tad more water. Note I've got some paper on my work surface to protect it because this is like liquid rock. When it dries, it's dry. And it doesn't want to go anywhere. I might have this a little bit thin, so I'm going to let it set up for about 10 minutes before I come back to it and apply it to my mosaic. See that? That might be a little bit thin, but we'll give it a go. Okay, see you in 10. Okay, this grout has had about 10 minutes to set up. So now comes the fun, messy part. First, we re-stir it. Then, we add the grout to our piece. We're gonna use a very technical term. We're gonna smoosh or smoosh the grout into all of the crevices in between all of our objects. This takes a while, and please wear gloves. The grout will dry out your hands real bad. It just couldn't be good for you, but look at this. 
I can feel with my fingers where the grooves are and I just want to work the grout down into there. Some people like to use a tool called a grout float, but I like to use my fingers because I can tell where the grout is going a lot better. Now look, do it in a bunch of different directions. Say I circle this way, circle the other way too. Get it way down into those joints. See, I'm just scooping it out with my fingers and pressing it on here. It's as simple as that. My gloves are a little bit too big. But don't worry about covering up all your stuff because it's going to come back out once we're done with this phase. So I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole thing, but you get the idea. As far as the sides go, it looks like we're covering up all our pretty work. But no worries, it'll reemerge in a little while. See, I'm rubbing one direction and then the other to get the grout all into those joints. I think I'll finish the sides before I finish the top. Okay, I've grouted the entire piece. Note that I didn't get any grout just because I didn't have to on top of the cars. That way I won't have to wipe that off. Um, but I've gotten grout down in all the little crevices. I'm gonna let this set up for a while too. You can see how wet this grout still is. I'm gonna let it set up for about 15 minutes or so before I start wiping the excess away. <laughs> 